I want to thank, like I say, I haven't been up here for about a while, a year, almost two years. I want to thank everybody for being here. I know Bob Hardy's been doing a very great job with my dismissal there for a couple of years. And uh, I want to thank our Board of Aldermen. I know we have a lot of new people in the mayor, and I want to thank the mayor very much for, for the work he's been doing. And of course, Brian Bishop and her, uh, Cindy Hickey, I want to thank you for the great job you're doing in the city. And like I say, we have our fire department. I want to thank them. I have all the names here, but I want to, go. I want to thank everybody. Now what I'll do is I'll turn you over to Bob, and he can, he can introduce our, our, our guest. Thank you, Joseph. At this present time, I'd like to bring up uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mayor, uh, Joseph Curry's Tony. Joseph? Thank you, Bob, and happy birthday. Thank it's you. Bob's 71st birthday, and, uh, and you, 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 you're getting younger. Yeah. Um, well, good morning, and thank you uh, all for allowing us to join you here today, myself and my colleagues and the board. Uh, I'm very privileged to be here with all of you. But uh, as we remember, our veterans, both some of those own heroes and those who served and who continue to serve our great nation, nation, as well as our first responders who continue to serve us every day and keeps our, keep us out of harm's way. I do want to take a brief moment just to formally introduce uh, the colleagues I serve with uh, in city government, the president of the Board of Aldermen, the Alderman from Ward 7, Ms. Katiana Ballantyne. <laughs> State Representative and former Alderman, Denise Provo. <laughs> Alderman at large, William White. Alderman at large, Ms. Stephanie Hirsch. <laughs> Mayor Emeritus, former Registrar of Deeds and Mayor of the City, Jean Brune. <laughs> Alderman from War II, J.T. Scott. <laughs> Alderman at large, Ms. Mary Jo Rossetti. <laughs> and Alderman at large, Mr. Will Mba. <laughs> Tomorrow, uh, as we know, we officially commemorate Veterans Day and honor uh, all who have served our country to protect our democracy and, and our freedom. November 11, 2018 also happens to coincide with two important anniversaries. Uh, first is the 100th anniversary of the end of what we had hoped would be the war to end all wars, which was World War I. And we were honored, uh, Representative Provost shared in a powerful photo and image of her grandfather and a photo with General Pershing. I want to thank him for his service. It is also the 100th anniversary of the death of our hero, uh, George Dilboy, for whom this VFW post and the new post is named after. Today is also a special day as it marks the uh, 242nd birthday of the United States Marine Corps, as Bob mentioned. As they say, once a Marine, always a Marine for all the Marines. Happy birthday. And just last night, we honored three uh, local heroes with Veteran of the Year Awards. And again, once again, want to congratulate the Veteran Police Officer of the Year, Mr. Samir Masudi, and Veteran Firefighter of the Year, Mr. Michael Jefferson. And once again, we honored uh, the Citizen Veteran of the Year, someone who has continued to serve since his original enlistment and discharge, honorable discharge from uh, service in Vietnam and kept the spirit of George Dilboy and the spirit of all those who served and sacrificed on behalf of their community and country, uh, Bobby Hardy. I want to give Bobby a big round of applause one more time. For all time. Thank you. Uh, and some of all, um, we do have a lot to uh, be thankful for. Many people to honor, uh, not just uh, on Veterans Day, but really, uh, as Brian Bishop mentioned uh, last evening, every day, we echo those words. So many men and women continue to put their lives on the line and leave their families behind, as we know, while they serve and protect all of us. So as we go from here this morning, I, I think we would all ask us all collectively to take a moment to recognize uh, their service and to continue to honor and serve them and our community every day in the work that we do. 
It's an honor and privilege to serve all of you. I'm inspired by your service, your sacrifice, and those who have fallen. And I also want to make sure we continue to remember and keep in our hearts our thoughts and our prayers the family members who are those who are sacrificed and have fallen, who have borne those scars and that trauma for years. Uh, God bless you. Thank you for having me here today. Would uh, Mr. White like to say a word for the chamber of, uh, for the Alderman's chambers? Oh, excuse me. I apologize. If you notice, I'm, I don't get into this politics, so I'm just stay down here at 371 Summer Street. So I apologize. No worries. So good morning. Thank you. And behalf of the myself and the Board of Aldermen, uh, we would like to thank all the veterans uh, for their for their service um, to our country, but also um, to their families. You know, I have to really say thank you to all the families, the people that supported, you know, our active military people while they were overseas, and also as they have uh, come back into our communities. You know, veterans are. Um, elected officials in our town. They work in the fire, they work in the police, they work in, um, um, in volunteering, you know, to make sure that our community is a, uh, is a compassionate community and is, um, is a community that, you know, pays attention to the neighbors around you. So on this day, as we're, we're celebrating our veterans, I, I thank you all very much for what you did, what you continue to do on behalf of our community. Thank you. Thank you. Denise, you, would you like to say something? Sure. Good morning, everyone. I'm impressed that you're all here on this damp and rainy and cold morning. Um, but that, that actually connects to, um, to the, the kind of thanks I want to express today for veterans. And that is not just your sacrifice and your, your response to the, the call of duty, but the example that you set for everyone. And you know, and this is something, as um, President Ballantyne says, goes to, to first responders too, because your example of sacrifice and, and responding when your, your nation calls um, should remind everyone that life is not all fun all the time. And sometimes um, the thing to do that's right is, is our duty. And that, that veterans exemplify, whether, whether they were conscripted or whether they volunteered, they exemplify answering the call of, of national good, um, whatever the personal cost. So thanks to, to everyone who has served and everyone who has offered support to everyone who has served. And thank you all, uh, including those, those like George Dilboy who have gone on for showing us um, the, our, our, our highest path as citizens. Thank you. Would any of the uh, other aldermen would like to say a word or two, uh, especially our first year or second year new aldermen? Uh, you might as well get your feet wet now, gentlemen, because you're gonna have a lot of talking to do. I had to do the same thing, so none? I'm just going to say in here that uh, as I was canvassing last year, some of my very favorite people to talk to were the veterans that I met, and it was just such an honor to listen to their stories and how, especially as they were the, those veterans who were getting older, about how they looked back at that period of their life and all the things that came between for them, the, the children they had had, the grandchildren, the work that they did, 
and also how they were thinking back to the friends who had passed away in service and how those friends uh, had missed all the things that had happened between when they were 22 and when they were 80. And so I just felt so much gratitude for both those people who passed away and the people who survived and went on to do so many great things in their families and their community. Thank you very much. I'll follow my colleague's example and just stay back here. I will say though that this is, uh, this is a day I've celebrated for years. My father, uh, U.S. Marine Corps, retired colonel. I don't hold that against him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but to the rest of you, happy birthday, gentlemen. Um, growing, up, uh, growing up in the South, growing up in a military family where every generation has had uh, veterans, that, that sense of duty, responsibility that my colleague Rep. Provo speaks of is one that um, it doesn't just resonate, it, it's really in the core, uh, and really in the core of our identity and our responsibility as citizens. So thank you for your service, thank you for supporting those who served, and thank you for continuing to hold that memory of duty, of obligation, of honor alive by being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Since I don't want to you know, be the only one who would and say something. <laughs> but thank you, thank you for having me here. It's really an honor to be part of this community. And I want to say that I used to live on Whitland Street. My neighbor, Tim Harrington, was also a veteran. And I must say that I've never seen a single veteran who, you know, is not, uh, who, who has ever regretted being, you know, uh, regretted being you know, on the call to duty. So people are so passionate to serve this nation, which is something that is very humbling. Like Rep. Provost also, you know, like emphasized like this. That call to duty is in everybody's heart. You know, the people who have served and the people who have supported them and the people who have gone. I mean, like we all honor them, and it's such a humbling ability to be able to be part of a community that you have all people who are always ready to step forward and serve their nation. So I, it's humbling for me to be part of this community and I'm really honored. You know, thank you for all you do and thank you for all you continue to do. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. I wasn't prepared to speak. <laughs> Usually the president speaks. Well, Thanks, Bob. <laughs> but honestly, um, on a personal note, I would share with you that when you, if you come to my home, in the first foyer, the first room that you enter is a mini tribute to my father and father-in-law who served our nation. Um, I have, my father-in-law is a past commander of the Logan Post, so I have his commander picture hung in my, on that wall and immediately below it is the flag that draped his coffin that was given to Louise, his wife, that my husband Rick now um, has the passing of his mom. So we honor his service. And my dad, next to his flag is my dad's flag. My dad served at the end of World War II in the Navy. Um, he's now laid to rest in Bourne Cemetery. And I have my picture of my dad who, became, sir, when he came home from service to our country, continued his service as a member of the fire department. So I have a picture, um, they actually let, when my dad retired, I have his helmet, a picture of him on the truck, and his flag and a picture of him. He was a signalman um, on, on the destroyer ship that he was assigned to. So every day, I and my family reflect and remember. And I, that's my personal story, and I, I never forget. So thank you all for your service. No, no, thank you very much. I've been going to these for now, I think this is my 21st year, and I remember many of the veterans who were very active in the post, who were no longer here because they passed on, especially um, my father was a member of 447, and he was close friends for many years with John O'Leary and Sal Lupietta. So I'd just like to keep them and, and all of the you know, veterans who have passed in, in all of these years in, in our thoughts today. Thank you.
We have one other gentleman. He, he was called the, the greatest generation, Mr. Bruhn. Would you have a story from World War II that you might want to? <laughs> we can't. I'm always pleased to be here on Veterans Day. I've been doing this here now since I was in Alderman back in 1972. Mm. So I guess I probably have about over 40 years of being in Dillboy Post. Dillboy Post was always one of the best posts in the city. Although I'm not a member, I'm a member of Logan Post and, a vet and also a member of Post 19 American Legion. I come from a family of veterans, my father, my brother, my uncles, my cousins. I had an uncle died in, in, uh, in Japan, uh, in, uh, in Germany. Uh, I uh, served, believe it or not, in World War II, but at the end, and I became a part of the occupational forces in Japan under General Douglas MacArthur. I was a medic, and I served in one of the hospitals for the longest time, and I saw the, what happened with those people who was, were still there at the end of the war that still couldn't come home because of their injuries. And I thought about this mostly this week because everything was DAV this week. If you heard on the radio, they had they had um, uh, uh, people donating some good money to DAV for the disabled veterans. And I thought about them that I remember seeing uh, in Japan, and also then you see every day. And those are the people that we can't forget because not only did they give their time and almost their life, but they also came back with injuries that are gonna be with them the rest of their life. And that you just can't forget. So when you think about veterans, think about all veterans, but also give them a thought that they're still in the hospitals. They're the ones with no legs, no arms, and so forth. They're the ones who, who have, have problems uh, that will never, it's sad for life. And so we have to think about that. I don't think the young people in the schools think about how bad war is. And it is bad, I saw it. I saw it myself. I didn't fight in it because I was too young when I went to Japan, but I saw it. I saw Hiroshima. I saw what it did, that atomic bomb did to Hiroshima and, and, and Nagasaki. So consequently, I know what war is, even though I didn't fight it. But, but you have to think about it and remember them all the time. Thank you. Thank you. We also have uh, Cindy Hickey here. She's with the, the elderly up in uh, the old Western School, would you like to say something about your husband's service or? <laughs> well, let's. I never prepare a speech. <laughs> um, but it is important to have, to be part of this program. And we have a great veterans program at the Council on Aging, and a lot of my veterans are here today. And it is very important for us every day to remember the veterans. You know, my, my husband served in the Marine Corps, my son-in-law in the Marine Corps, my grandson was injured in Iraq. And um, you know the mayor was extremely kind at that time to support him. He was one of his football players, and Adam still carries those wounds today. And I was talking to him this morning, and it, he has those ghosts. And those are the things we need to to think about and remember because it does affect the whole family. So thank you. Do we have any Korean veterans? Korean veterans. How about Vietnam veterans? Les, would you like to say something? Uh, Tom, uh, Tom and Tom, go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, I'm committed for DAV. Uh, my service was in Vietnam with the first Cav of Guavia. I served in 1969, 1970. I enlisted in my senior year of high school. Uh, I guess I, I joined because of my father my father and my mother are both married in Bourne National Cemetery from World War II. My father joined, uh, well, on their married date, 1938. My father graduated Maritime College as a captain of an oil tank in the Merchant Marines. He served from 1938 till 1945. He never came home until the war was over, and he served in the Atlantic Pacific. Thank God he never got torpedoed. Uh, my older brother was born in 46, and my twin brother and I were born in 49. So my, it's been 20 years in October that my father's been gone. But if it wasn't probably for the uh, honor and the institution of my father impressed on me, uh, I probably wouldn't have been in the war. But I thank everybody here. We have served, uh, especially Bobby, our good friends. But I thank everybody. 
Yeah, we were all just getting out of Somerville High, and we were all in getting drafted. Uh, we all, a lot of the Somerville boys, we all ended up over in Vietnam. There's a whole bunch of them uh, buried up at Claverton Hill. There's others who got there, buried at family plots, different places. But we all served in those days. Uh, if we get called to go, we win. Okay, I'll tell you a little about myself. It's very minimal. I only, I was a draftee. In those days, it was the best way to go. It was only two years. I didn't have to be an RA, which was regular Army. We had National Guard there. And when I went over to the Army base here in Boston in 67, July of 67, they were uh, drafting for all branches of the service. Coast got all the way down because they weren't making the quotas to do it. So I happened to get lucky. I, they say I was lucky, but I went down to Fort Dix for eight weeks. Then from eight, a week from there, I went to uh, Fort Sam Houston to be a medic. And when my call got to be done, I graduated the day before Thanksgiving in 67. Then I was supposed to be assigned to the 196th Light Infantry as a medic with the grunts, and that changed in for the better for me, which I don't know to this day because I ended up with the 1st Cavalry Division, and they were all over the country, and uh, they moved. So I was only granted 15-day leave. I reported to Oakland Army Base on the 13th of... Uh, December. I landed in Vietnam on the, uh, the 15th of December with the A Company 15th Medical Battalion. And what they did, they were the uh, medevac for the whole division and the Marine Corps, whoever was handy. So we had Thanksgiving dinner, I mean uh, Christmas dinner in uh, headquarters company. The next day was which the day after Christmas on the 26th. You heard the movie. Welcome Vietnam, right? Well, that night, I got welcomed. We had a rocket and motor attack about 2 o'clock in the morning. So you wake up. I was so exhausted from doing everything all day. Never made it to the bunker. I slept right next to the bunker and didn't get up to run. It's the worst mistake, you can get up and run. Then what had happened, we had to be moved. I was at Camp Evans, Tata 68 at LZ Baldy with the 3rd Brigade. The 3rd Brigade, if you notice, it's the 7th Cavalry Division, and I was attached to the 7th Cavalry Division most of my whole tour there. So from LZ Baldy in a couple of weeks, we moved from there to Camp Evans. And uh, as you know, that was Tetris 68, and the poor Marines in the whole country, everyone was getting shot at and everything else. Down in the southern part of the country, down in uh, Saigon and those down there, it happened the last 10 days. And theirs was over. But up in the uh, I Corps, where uh, Wave was, those mar Marines, it took them almost 30 days to clean out the city. And we were using for a blocking force, so no more NVA or VC would get into that complex. They set us down for another two weeks. Okay, you're moving again, gentlemen. Where are we moving? Well, they had a little skirmish, which they called Quezon. And our Marines up there were under siege. That was still part of Quezon, and it lasted 77 days. And I was up there for two weeks, and we were using for another blocking outfit. So when they started to get the Marines back in one piece, because that was the solution, Johnson didn't want to lose Quezon. Neither did uh, Westmoreland. So we set it up so it wasn't going to be like when the, uh, the French get massacred in, uh, I forget the name of the uh, establishment there. But we sat down there for two days. Then they sat us down again when we went back to Camp Evans. This time here we moved again. A little place called the Eggshaw Valley, which was right next to the Ho Chi Minh Trail. And uh, as I come out, I told people that in April of 68, they had tanks in the Eggshaw Valley. They said, Bob, you're crazy. I said, well, don't tell me. I know what was there, because I was on LZ Tiger. No, LZ T uh, Stallion. And we did a 21-day operation there. So then they set us down for another six months. That six months was up in I Corps at Quang Tree City with the 3rd Brigade. That was the relief of Quezon and Quang Tree City rid the VC and the NBA out of that there. Then I, had, then I went on R&R &R one time, and I went to Hawaii. Well, 
It took me 10 days to get back to the company. The company had moved from the I Corps down to three Corps. And what they wanted, that was December of 68. They come to us, the five, six medics that we hung out together. They said, gentlemen, would you like to extend? Why do we want to extend? We already survived the Tet of 68. They thought they were going to have another Tet of 69. We kindly declined. We went home. And here I am, 50 years later, standing right here. And proudly to say one, one thing. I'm a proud, I lived in Somerville, and I'm proud I'm a Vietnam veteran. And this is where I've been for the last 50 years, doing little things to help the community. Little things. But the biggest thing that we have done in the last nine years, I set my mind to it, and I got my, some of my members on board, and we're going to have a beautiful building right out there, gentlemen and ladies. And that's going to be a community building. It's open for the city. We wanted to go back to the old days the way it was when the VFW, the American Legion, the DAV were in partnership with the city. This is what we want so they can use it. Cindy Hickey's already uh, requested that we use some of it for her dances here. It's a beautiful building and uh, I'm going to invite all of you right now to come to my opening, our opening, excuse me, our opening because it's everyone's. It's the communities and everyone else. So that is guaranteed. And I'm going to work with the city, whatever they need, to make that there because there's not too many uh, halls that are going to be in the city. And if you look at it, uh, it looks like a courthouse, but we're not going to hold court. We're going to have some uh, <laughs> enjoyable times in there. <laughs> it looks like it's over in Mr. Cavo over there. But that is, that is the dream that I've had from uh, day one. There's days that I wanted to throw the towel in, but I wouldn't because... We were getting, uh, I wasn't going to use the words because the Bible's here, so, but uh, <laughs> we made it. We're 85% complete. Hopefully we can be in by Christmas and we'll have a little Santa running around for us in there. And I, and I invite you all. And also that uh, we're going to have a, a memorable walk out there. And it, uh, it's going to be anyone that uh, you like to have names out there, there's a sample up there. <laughs> I'll give you an example. I bought a brick for myself. I brought one for my father. My father was at the, the uh, 542nd Engineer and Boat Battalion during World War II. Uh, we just seen Mr. McLaughlin walk in. He was with the uh, 554th Engineers and Boat Regiment out of Cape Cod. And uh, a couple of years ago, I, I got his uh, 214. I couldn't read it. And, uh, I asked Mr. Ray O'Brien, which was a World War II veteran, I said, Bob, what's this? You talk about father's experience. He said, Bob, you, do you know what your father did? I said, no, Ray, that's why I'm asking you. He did five spearhead invasions. That means he went in prior to the invading force. And there were some uh, hell of a names on there. Leahy was one, New Guinea, and down through the South Solomon Islands. And I never got to talk to my father about that, and I miss it. That is what we're missing in the soul system in the school. They don't teach civics and history anymore. It's left aside. It's gone. We can't let our future go wasted without talking about it. Uh, as I was coming out of the dinner last night, that I get, uh, oh, let me see, it wasn't a rude awakening. I think uh, Mr. Bishop, uh, he threw one over my uh, head to get my daughter and my wife and everyone else to uh, get me to the uh, breakfast. And the city did give me an award, and I appreciate it. But it should have been for the whole Dilboy Post, because it should have been our award, not mine. I just happened to be at the right place at the right time this time. So that's all I can say. Now, I got a couple of people from our auxiliary. Alisa Gould is the president. <laughs> we, we got Kathy and uh, <laughs> Trish and her husband, Mario. But over this last year, we have lost 25 members in our post, and it's hard to replenish them. We've got a member, we've got two members, one's 107 and one's 104, and uh, that is incredible. But if you look at the age of them, that are passing away, even Vietnam veterans are on our list now. They're 68 and 70. I'm fortunate I'm 71. I never thought I would get out of Vietnam with the MOS I had as being an infantryman. infantryman. What my job was, really, was set up the aid stations before the battles started. 
So I know what it means to be a first responder. We were there. We had one aid station that was underground up in case on an LZ stud because we didn't know how long we were going to be there. And uh, something that won't go away, we, they talk about wounds, uh, limbs and arms missing. The hardest one that you want to find out is the one that's in your brain that never goes away. And it doesn't show anything for post-traumatic stress. I never knew I had them until I lost my son 20 years ago when I picked him up. He was dead in my arms and I thought, what happened to this? I went right back to Vietnam. I did two years of counseling in uh, post-traumatic stress, so I know what it feels like to be there. But it's taken me a long time to stand up here in front of anyone and say it to it. You know, it's very hard. And I never knew Mr. Mr. Brun was a corpsman in the uh, World War II. That's something that we have in common. Even though he got elected in 72. Oh, where's Jean? Go on. <laughs> <laughs> It's <laughs> not out on me. I, I thought I was putting him to sleep. <laughs> Mr. McLaughlin, would you like to come up and say something for the generation of uh, Iraqi and Afghanistan? Uh, Hi everyone, uh, Matt McLaughlin, uh, World One Alderman. I'm also an Iraq War vet. Um, thank you, Bob, for letting me speak. But you know, I actually don't even want to speak about Iraq ge generation because this summer I had the opportunity to go to the beaches of Normandy in France, uh, which was an incredibly moving experience for me to see. You know, this beautiful, pristine beach area that still has uh, bomb shells in it and all the uh, memorials, the graves to the soldiers who fought in World War II from England and from France and from the United States. Um, and the thing that uh, I always think of when I go to things like this and I see um, they had videos of the soldiers who fought and died there and how, how average they were, how they were just average Americans put in crazy situations that we can't even imagine uh, and just doing what they can on behalf of their country. Um, and that's how I felt, you know, serving in Iraq. Uh, working with a lot of people, some of the best people I've ever known, who were just average Americans, who just wanted to do something greater than them, themselves and to contribute to society. And that's what, you know, I feel like we need more of that in America right now, is just average people doing the best they can for their country, whether it's in the military or whether it's public service. We had a great uh, speaker at uh, or the uh, marshal at this year's Veterans Day event, works for a group called Crossing the Rubicon, which is all about service in country, not just outside of, uh, not just in the military. So I always try to encourage people to do that, veterans to get more involved and to contribute to the community and to get involved in groups like the VFW and the Post uh, and other groups like Team Rubicon and um, Mission Continues because these groups will die out if we don't have the next generation of veterans uh, standing up and getting involved. So thank you, Bob. I, I always love listening to what you have to say because it's very moving. And even though we're from different generations, I identify with what you said. And um, it's just, you know, it's, it's hard, but it's also a great honor to be a veteran. And I appreciate being here. Thank you. I'll introduce this next uh, veteran, but this is the first time he's going to have nothing to say because Mr. Bishop, <laughs> that, that's our veteran service officer, and he's been doing an excellent job. And like I say, the other night he surprised me last night, and I want to thank him for that. So. <laughs> he wasn't kidding. I don't have much of a voice, but I have to say this. December 7th will make three years I've been in this city as your veteran services director and commissioner. I feel a part of this community, and hearing these stories today reminds me of my 20 years of service in the Air Force. But it also reminds me of something Matt just said. It says, even though Bobby and I are from different generations, being a veteran crosses it all. No matter whether you're a day one grunt or whether you're the highest ranking general who's put in 40 years in the military, we all serve this country because we believe in it. And I think in this day and time, we forget what this country stands for. With all of the noise that we hear every single day, I think of my friends who served in this country. 
My father who served this country in Vietnam. My grandfather who served in World War II in Korea. We are one nation under God, whether you believe that whatever God that is. This country was an idea. It's an experiment. And every single one of us stood up and raised our right hand, whether we were conscribed to do it or whether we did it on our own volition. We raised our right hand to defend this Constitution of the United States of America and to further this experience and this experiment more and more every single day. This young man sitting right here in the Boy Scout uniform, that's where it begins. It begins when our children are young. A veteran is just not your grandfather. It's not just someone who served and who has died. It's an alderman who works in this community tirelessly. It's a former mayor who served. It's myself who served for 20 years. It's a young Marine last night that we honored, young Army reservists that we honored. This is the future of our country. It's time for us to stop listening to the noise and start listening to those who've gone before us. We are the United States of America. We don't need to be great again. We are great already. But we're forgetting the most important part of service is just not in the military. It's just not as a firefighter. It's just not as a police officer. It's a person who will stand up every single day and say, what can I do to make my community better? What can I do to make my family's life better? That's why every day when I go to my, go to my office, I say to myself, if I can make one person's life somewhat better, I've done my job. But that job never ends. Kathy and I work together every single day, and I will tell you, we hear stories that I could go on and on for hours about, about our veterans who live in this community, just this one community, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, that's the only state in the union that has a law in the books that says we will take care of our veterans. Unequivocally, that's what we do. Why can't the rest of the country do that? Why can't someone else stand up and say, one veteran suicide a day is too many. Why did it say that one homeless veteran is too many? Because those people gave up everything they had to serve this great nation. And when they come home and they don't have the services and the benefits that they so richly deserve, because we're too busy, busy listening to the noise. I rededicate myself every single day to this community, this commonwealth, this nation that so many of us have fought and died for. So as we go from this place today, as we remember 100 years since the war to end all wars, which, which was a joke, it wasn't. And every single time we've gone into battle, we keep saying, we'll learn this time. We're going to make it better this time. Well, why don't we do it? And it, has to, it doesn't start globally, it starts locally, it starts here. And all of you who are here today are, are, are a testament to that. But there was a time, and Tommy Lane and I talked about this, there was a time this hall was overflowing with people at ceremonies just like these. There was a time when our parade, there was five or six people deep. Are we just too busy? Every single day, think about it. This country would not be where it is today if it weren't for people like these. Even our public servants, even our elected officials. If you stand up and say, I do this because I want to make your life better and your life better and your life better, that's service. That's what we honor here today. And there's so much of it. So when we go from here today, continue to be proud. You see a veteran, you thank them for your service, but words, eh, let's do something about it.
Let's do something about it. Let's rededicate ourselves so that the next hundred years, when we're looking back and saying, you know, World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Desert Storm, Iraq, Afghanistan, Grenada, all the small ones in there that we tend to forget. When they look back and they say, you know, there was once a dream called America. And that dream is alive a hundred years from now as it is today. But I ask you, I beg you on behalf of these heroes and the heroes who are not here and the heroes who cannot speak for themselves. The only noise we should be listening to is a pledge, our national anthem, and the stories of service and sacrifice that have built this country for over 240 years. I ask that God continue to bless our city, our commonwealth, and our nation. And to each one of you, a happy, happy Veterans Day weekend. Thank you. Thank you. That was nice, Brian. Thank you very much. At this time, I'll ask the mayor and the uh, president of the, the chamber and our Boy Scout to uh, lay the wreath at the front. At this time, I'll call on the chaplain, closing prayer, and cover. Our Heavenly Father, we deem this a fitting time to pay our respects to our departed comrades. As we stand with bowed heads in reverence to them, let us remember the good deeds they have accomplished. Let us revere them as good soldiers who fought the good fight in a just cause. Let us silently pray for peace, the peace that passes all understanding. And let us in mind and soul consecrate our hearts and lives to the real America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, the America worth fighting for. As we stand in silence to our departed comrades, may we sincerely say, may their souls rest in peace. Let us also remember the POWs and MIAs still unaccounted for from the wars and conflicts. Amen. 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 Roger the mom, stand by color. And salute. Two. Thank you. And this time next year, we'll be in a hell of a lot better place than this place here. And I hope to have the coffee pot working properly. <laughs> I apologize again, but we're on the move, so you guys are all welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. From the Dilboy Post and its members. Thank you very much. And the Veterans Thank you. Thank you.